<laughs> What's up, everybody? Hello. How you doing? Good. When, Good. when was the first time in your life that you imagined yourself as Superman? <laughs> I think it was five or six. My mom made me a homemade cape uh, for Halloween one year. First, I was Superboy to my brother Superman because whatever superhero he was, I was either the lesser version of it <laughs> or um, the sidekick. That's cool. So when he was Batman, I was Robin. When he was Superman, I was Superboy. Um, but like any four-year-old, it played very heavily into my psychology. Because, you know, and I think that's what makes the character resonate for so long with so many people. So he's who we hope we could be in the most dire of circumstances. Um, but my mom made me a cape, homemade, and I wore that out for like two years. I didn't even care. I had no shame about it. I mean, I would strap it on. It had a snap right here. I'd get on my bike, just let it trail behind me. People would laugh. I didn't give a damn. I was Superman. Now so, you are Superman. Now I'm the voice of Superman. Yeah. yeah so. How did you wrap your head around that role? Like, what did you want to carry over from other interpretations? And what did, how did you want to make it like your own thing? It's a good question and you know I'm trying to answer this uniquely since I've been asked a few times but it's you know it, the character is so iconic to everyone and not just guys I think every guy and girl would love to get to play Superman at some point in their life um, am I right girls? Am I wrong? Yeah. Okay alright good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you know you try to there's no, you can't help but have all those incarnations especially if you're a fan of the character in the back of your head but you can become so busy with that that it distracts you from the story at hand. All you really have to work with is the script you're given. And uh, you don't want to get too sidetracked on, oh, but in 1937, he was more like, you know, you just have that story. So I try to keep up, you know, uh, some of the consistencies of the character that, that main, are maintained throughout every incarnation of the story. And also just, um, deal with the script that we were given and in this particular uh, story uh, Superman is its a very mature Superman that we're seeing. He's always dealing with weighty issues but he's very paternal towards Supergirl, he's very protective of Lois, he's very um, and also having to deal with Brainiac who is a very um, intense adversary. So I tried to balance the, the heavier more mature version of him with a lighter, fun, more charming um, uh, sense of playfulness with Lois and other songs. If you had to talk to somebody, one of your fans of you know, your own character work, and they've never seen an animated show before, oh, man. <laughs> how would you, what would you say to them to give, it, to give this a shot? <laughs> oh man, well, I, you know, I think they'll, anybody who likes Superman would love the story. Uh, the, the creative team behind it's fantastic. And, uh, I, you know, I think it's, it's a great new take in some ways on the character and the story and, and I think it'll appeal to a lot of different audiences so there's no reason not to give it a shot really. If you don't like Superman, something's wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> who, was, who was your Superman as a kid? Was it was it the Christopher Reeve ones? Was it... Yeah, he was, I mean, at first it was um, the comic or I remember distinctly a puzzle that I had that my mom had got me where he was battling a gorilla okay. that I still have. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, they, and then, um, uh, and then the first film version was obviously the first Christopher Reeve, and then I, and I you know, followed through that whole franchise. So visually, always there's always like the glasses for Clark Kent and Superman, but when you're doing the voice, you don't. Oh, always you have, have that, your like, voice. How did you? How Pretty naked and cold right? in there, baby. <laughs> Moment where you were like, I gotta change the pitch a little bit. Was it super enough? Yeah, well, totally. Yeah, yes is the answer. Is the short answer to that. But um, and truthfully, um, but yeah, it's um, you know, the good part of it is that you get to show up to work in your pajamas if you want. And a lot of this more um, external aspects of filmmaking, you get to kind of toss by the wayside. But the more challenging part is that all you have to convey character and emotion is your voice. And we recorded it first, and then they animated it. And then we came back and changed lines, fine-tuned things. So um, it was interesting to see. You know, you record something ahead of time, and then it ended up that that was actually a close-up. And so screaming it wasn't so great. <laughs> and so then you have to change to that. But having Andrea especially, who's just such a legend, I mean, she is such an integral part of my childhood, and probably all of yours. If you IMDb her, you'll know what I'm saying. 
don't make me sing the entire Disney afternoon lineup. No one would object. Because life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. Um, but no, it was very challenging in terms of that. And I wanted to take it very seriously because I knew this was a character that people had so many preconceived notions about. And so I relied pretty heavily on her to shepherd me through it. And um, I got really into it in the fight scenes, man. Like I was... I didn't realize you didn't have to really throw punches and, and kicks and, you know, punch yourself in the stomach when Brainiac did. Um, so they laughed. They got a couple good laughs out of me in the sound booth. But, um, you know, I wanted to bring my best to it. So. Two more questions. Make them great. Make them super. <laughs> no pressure. Um, so do, do you find that since you were kind of mimicking the physicality in it, that you had to be more uninhibited while you're doing the voices than something you would in do? In some ways, time? yeah, especially in the fight scenes. Um... But uh, what I realized is you really have to use every part of yourself still and, and be even more expressive with your voice. Um, but yeah, it was, um, there were times you had to give more than usual, there were times you had to give less. It was just, you know, I was cutting my teeth on something new, so I was just learning on the fly. For you, why is Superman still relevant after all these days? Isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> I have to get this. Like, just just put it in Google it. Yeah, that's how I found it. I'm like, All right. I wonder if that exists, and it does. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I love that you were just like, I'm a Google frozen Han Solo app on. <laughs> why, why do you think that character? Isn't it great when you get yeses like that yes. from the World Wide Web? I don't have to make this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. So why, why do you think that character is still relevant, still important to kids? And, and you know, obviously, people like adults have nostalgia, but. The character keeps renewing time after time. Why do you think? Well, he's the first superhero, you know, and I, I think he, like I said earlier, he represents what we all hope we could be in the most difficult circumstances. Our best self, the best version of us. I mean, outside of just as a kid wanting to be able to fly and run faster than a speeding locomotive, and you know, be able to being able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. You know, he, we hope we'd like to hope that in, when push comes to shove, that we could do the right thing. And I think as long as there is that hope in our society and in, in the zeitgeist, um, the superheroes like Superman will be relevant. So now that we've finally gotten you as Superman, which is awesome, <laughs> is there any other character that you would like to play? I think you would make an excellent Nightwing. That's what I was going to say. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Just say I put it out there. Yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> you keep up with all the comic books now? I try. I mean, it's, you know, my life's pretty busy these days. I'm more of a graphic novel guy, but um, I try. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. You. I really hope you like the movie. <laughs>